The following data modeling overview was delivered as part of a DB2 application programming class of Protex on March 31st of 2014. What we're going to do is we're going to talk in Chapter 1 about uh, something called uh, Entity Relationship Modeling. Now, most likely this is not going to be something that you're going to need to do, but because a lot of the databases that you have to process with, those are already out there, they're already designed. So there's a couple of key things I want to talk about in this particular book, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. I won't cover this entirely, but I want to talk about a couple of important things that even if you didn't design the database, or create the database, there are some key elements here that you need to be aware of as a developer. So one of the things that every developer needs to be aware of, that needs to understand, is something called the data model. And the data model is a pictorial representation of what your data structure looks like. By that, I mean data structure. I mean what your table structures look like. In other words, what tables related to what table so on and so forth. So really what we're going to deal with here is we're going to deal with this data model that's going to illustrate entities and it's going to illustrate relationships. How does the data relate to each other? So as an example of that, if you look at page 1-8, an example is let's say we have two entities, a vendor entity and we have a parts entity. Now, now when I use the term entity, I want you to think of this, an entity is like a table. That's what an entity would be. Now, if I have, let's say I have a vendor table and I have a parts table, what would be the relationship? Well, a vendor supplies parts, and consequently, parts are supplied by a vendor. So, so that's really what the relationship indicates. So when, we, when the designers come up and they go through this process of coming up with a data model, the lines that they show between the two entities or tables are really truly nothing more than just a relationship. So as they're going through and designing relationships, one of the things that they're going to do is they're going to establish certain rules that the tables must live by. And by doing this, we're going to illustrate whether the tables have a one-to-one -one relationship, a one-to-many relationship, and a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, in the first case, what we have at the top of the page here, the one to one this is showing me that a division a division one division has one division manager and the reverse is the division manager belongs to one division so in this illustration both must be present and you may only have one on either side that's called a one to one relationship mm -hmm. a one to many relationship is where we have essentially like a single uh, arrow on the left side going into customer and a double arrow on the right side going into order. So what we're saying here is that a customer may have one or more orders. In other words, a customer could have multiple orders. However, mm. we're also saying the reverse, and that is a order. One order may only have one customer. This is called a one-to-many. The last illustration is called a many-to-many -many where a customer may have multiple accounts, all right? A customer may have multiple accounts, and one account may have multiple customers. If you think about it from a banking standpoint, you as a customer may have a checking account, savings account, whatever, and likewise, your account may have multiple customers in the case of a joint account. So again, this is also something that, that we need to look at from a modeling standpoint and understand this. But in all three of the illustrations that we have on page 1-11, one of the things that we have to understand is in this illustration, both sides must be present, which is not always the case because sometimes we have to note that one of the sides can be present while the other side does not have to be there. So, for example, a warehouse can have zero, one, or more items, all right, where an item can belong in one or more warehouses. Now, in a situation where a warehouse has zero items, if you think about certain items are carried in a regional location, like if I have snowmobiles, I'm probably going to uh, have those carried in my Anchorage, uh, Alaska warehouse. But if I have, let's say, uh, uh, surfboards, I might carry those in my uh, Hawaii warehouse or San Diego warehouse. 
there's really not much sense in carrying my surfboards up to Anchorage, Alaska, because they don't do a lot of surfing up there. So, so the point is, sometimes we have to show where one particular, in this case, entity, the warehouse entity, may not have certain items. And the term for this is conditionality. It's a conditional relationship. So, you know, if you think about it, we sometimes have to have our data live by these rules, okay? All right, so that's that's another important thing that the developer should take away from the data model itself. And then one last thing that I always like to recommend people do is actually put text that illustrates what the relationship is actually representing. So, for example, a customer places one or more orders. Uh, order is placed by one customer. So I can clearly see here that that's the intent of this relationship. That's what this relationship represents. If you look at a line and I look at a line, we both can extrapolate something different in terms of what that line means. But if I put text here, I'm clearly stating that's what this is. Now, here, I want to talk a little bit about some of the columns that we would have in the either the entity or the table. And there's really three different kinds of columns. The first type of column is a column that uniquely identifies an entry into the table. The term for this is primary key. All right? Primary key yep. is a unique identifier. So for example, if you have a customer, your primary key would be like customer number. If you have an order, your primary key would be like order number, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other kind of column is known as a foreign key. A foreign key is a column in one table that is a primary key in another table, a foreign key. And foreign keys allow us to have relationships. So to kind of illustrate that point, Let's say I have a, a customer table, all right, and that's what my top box is going to be. And down here, I've got another table, and there's a line. And let's say that uh, here, in, in uh, this is my customer table, okay. Now, my primary key for customer, I'm going to call C-U-S-T-N-O, CUSTNO. Now, down here in the bottom, I have a an account table. So, how how does how do we know what customer belongs with what account? Well, one of the things that we have to have in the in the account table is a column that identifies the owner of the the, the customer number that that this account is owned by. So, this is where the foreign key would come into play. So again, by definition, as I said, by definition, a foreign key is a primary key in another table. That's truly the definition of the foreign key. But more importantly, as you can see here, you have a customer number in the, in the customer table, customer number in the account table, and this is what gives me my relationship. This is how these two tables tie together. All right? So... Uh, it's, it's, it's something we need to know from a design principles perspective. We need to know what are what are my primary key and what's a foreign key. So when I go to when I come up to Trenton or or I go anywhere in the world and I'm having to deal with writing code and looking at a data model, I'm looking for relationships. And more specifically, I'm looking for a primary key and what is the foreign key column. I need to know that, and this is particularly important when we do joins, okay? Very important. All right, now, all of your other columns that are listed or attributes that are listed, those are called description attributes. In other words, they describe the, what the primary key is representing. So, for example, if I have a customer number as my primary key, probably my description attributes would include things like the customer's name, date of birth, their address, et cetera, et cetera. So all of those other things describe that particular primary key. So important takeaway is to make sure you know what the relationships are and what the columns are that define the relationship.